so I'm signed in as a user here. Let's say Paul is an IT director at the organization. So Paul uh, will now see this tab identity certification now that uh, this organization has identity compliance. And with identity compliance, there's a couple different certification campaigns Paul has access to, one of which the IT admins certification campaign, uh, Paul can see all of his direct reports. So as a manager, he can go ahead and certify access for all of his employees. And he'll notice he's able to certify access to applications, corporate applications like Workday, Box, Incur, et cetera. Um, but for users that have access to our keys to the kingdom, our most privileged credentials, Paul can actually certify access to those credentials as well, those privileged credentials that we're protecting with PAN. And if we take a look at John as an example, we'll see that John as a user, uh, we've now discovered that John has access to four different safes. That might not have been something super simple to find that information in our PAM reporting, but here it's been surfaced to us really quickly and easily. And not only what safes John has access to, but also what permissions John has on those safes. So it might be kind of interesting to us. We can see that Mike is the owner of this safe, but John actually has quite a lot of permissions to this safe. Um, and why is that? Well, let's let's first take a look at what's in this safe. So just like that, we can actually see the accounts that are in the safe in this certification campaign. So in one kind of plane, we can have an understanding of the privileged accounts that this user has access to. So things like uh, a Unix root user, Windows domain credentials, et cetera. So we can see those privileges uh, in kind of one interface. And now that we understand that Mike's the owner of this safe, um, maybe John shouldn't have some of these privileges, like the ability to manage safe members as an example and add other users to the safe. Why does John have that privilege? That might be something that we understand that we want to revoke. So we're going to go ahead and revoke that access as Paul here. And if we take a look at our PAM environment, hopefully I'm still signed in at the moment to take a peek at that. So we can look at our PAM environment. This is for our Linux target safe. We can see the members in this safe and John is one of those members. So if we take a look at John's permissions, let's go ahead and revoke this access. So now if we take a look at John's permissions here, we look under the safe management and monitoring, John no longer has the ability to uh, manage safe users. So just like that, we were able to revoke a privilege uh, in a safe through identity compliance. So that's pretty cool. Uh, on top of that, you can easily see access to decisions that were made in the past. So if we run past certification campaigns, we can understand if access was revoked, why it was revoked, uh, et cetera. And that's true both for applications and our most privileged credentials are safes. So now as Paul, I've, uh, I've, I've done my job for one of our users. And as you'll notice, anytime I'm going to certify or revoke access, like if I were maybe a, a manager that said, hey, I just want to certify everyone's access, it all looks good. That's not possible because we can set up, we can set up rules as administrators to make sure that kind of rubber stamping isn't happening. Uh, so we can actually have a comment made on each one of these revocations or each one of these certifications as a manager is going through and certifying that access. Cool, so that gives us an idea of what's possible, the art of seeing uh, the ability to revoke or certify access to applications and to our most privileged credentials and to permissions on those uh, most privileged credentials, permissions on our stakes. So that gives us a good understanding as an end user what's possible or as a certifier what's possible. But with good segregation of duties, we'll notice that Paul doesn't have access to create certification campaigns. That's going to be someone else at the organization. So let's go ahead and take a look from an administrative view what that looks like. So here we are as an admin uh, to in identity compliance, and we can go ahead and set up uh, access certification campaigns. So let's go ahead and do that here. The first thing we'll do is create a campaign. And now when we're creating these access certification campaigns, we can think about, okay, well, what resources or what users do we want to certify access for? 
maybe we want to run a campaign that looks at all of our users permissions for a corporate application like Workday. Or maybe we want to run a campaign that is going to look at all of our users who have access to Linux servers at the organization. Or very commonly, uh, and just as we saw in our example, maybe we want to create a campaign that's going to certify access for a certain group of users, like our IT admins. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we created this campaign in the first place. So here we're going to fill out some basic settings, uh, like naming this campaign, saying when we want to start this campaign. Great. Uh, and one of the things we can do, uh, one of the, the first features to point out that's uh, really important to organizations from a compliance standpoint is to actually make these campaigns reoccurring. So as Kazar mentioned earlier, many organizations will have uh, compliance regimes like NIST or ISO that they'll want to follow that will actually have us doing these kind of certification campaigns on a quarterly or uh, annual basis. So in this case, we're going to say, let's go ahead and create this campaign to run every 90 days. We're going to have our manager, just like Paul was, certify this access. Now, we also could have a specific user certify access. So if you were running a campaign on, let, let, let's say, your Linux servers, you could actually have the safe manager of all those different safes that affects the Linux servers uh, be the person that certifies that access. Or you could have your app admins, like in the Workday example, you could have your Workday admin certify that access. But in many cases, you're going to want the user's manager certifying that access. They're closest to the field, so they're going to understand what privileges their users need best, generally speaking. And for this certification campaign, we want it completed within a reasonable time frame. So 10 days uh, seems quite reasonable for a manager to certify access. We can go ahead and even send nudges via email reminders. So we're going to go ahead and every day send an email reminder to say, hey, uh, certifier, make sure you fill this out. And then finally, we can prevent that kind of rubber stamping by requiring comments to be made. And even when a user is finished signing off, we can verify their identity by prompting them for MFA. Last thing here, I'm going to go ahead and change this to as soon as a certifier revokes access, let's have that go ahead and take effect. So now we can go ahead and take a look at the user population that's going to be affected here. If we wanted to run a certification campaign, on a specific organization, we could do that. So let's say we had a subsidiary company at the organization, maybe that we just acquired, and we want to run a certification campaign on the rights of that subsidiary company. We could go ahead and create a certification campaign for that specific organization. In our case, we're going to say uh, we want any user to potentially be affected, but uh, at any organization, but we do want to have this campaign specifically affect a subset of users. And this subset of users could come from uh, a role or group determination, and that could be in CyberArk itself, like using a CyberArk role, or using things like your Active Directory groups, your Azure groups, whatever directory source, we can go ahead and uh, actually target that specific subset of users based on their role or group membership. So we're going to go ahead and create this campaign to affect IT admins. And then lastly, we're going to want to select which resources we're actually certifying access on. So are we running a campaign to specifically validate uh, access to, let's say, an application like Box? Um, or do we want to check all of our IT users access to all applications, I should say? Um, in this case, yes, we want to discover what applications the IT admins have access to. So we'll go ahead and run this campaign on all applications. And then we can also see that we could run this certification campaign on specific safes. So as we talked about earlier, if we wanted to see all of our uh, the permissions to Linux servers at the organization, we could specify Linux safes and run a campaign based on that. But in this case, since we're running this campaign based on a group of users, we're, we're going to want to discover all of the safes that these users have access to. So we'll go ahead and say all safes here as well. So just like that, we can go ahead and create a campaign. Uh, excuse me here. Oh, yep. Yeah, let, let's give this a unique name. Uh, so just like that, we can go ahead and create a campaign here. 
Now for one of our campaigns that we have ongoing, let's actually take a look at it. Uh, as a backend administrator, we can get a bunch of reports and analytics on this. Uh, one of the really neat things we can do right now is actually check on the progress of a campaign as a backend admin. So we can see, hey, Paul, you know, you're not making any progress on this campaign. Let's go ahead and send you a nudge, a reminder that you should go ahead and start to make some ac some some action on this campaign. And just like that, we'll see uh, emails that can be sent and triggered uh, for certifiers, whether automatically or whether through a push like we just saw as an administrator. And those emails can take us right to our identity certification camp, our identity certification page, so that we as certifiers can understand that we need to get get a move on and get going on certifying our direct reports uh, access to resources. So that's a quick demonstration of identity compliance and some of the, the highlights of the features. Again, we talked about the ability to discover access, whether to applications, safes, et cetera. Uh, the ability for someone to certify that access like a manager or an application slash safe owner uh, and the ability on the back end to have audit and reporting analytics kind of built into this.